It is Friday, August 5th, and the time is 2.24 p.m. And um, just wanted to go ahead and uh, go over the week on everything that happened. Uh, I did, like I said, I did finish early with the Forex. I put more orders in Monday uh, due to volatility on Tuesday, Monday night, overnight. Uh, I was able to get out of everything Tuesday and be done with it. Didn't really add any additional Forex orders. This is pretty much the same. Uh, those orders were just a friend of mine. I was just showing how to put orders in, just show some examples and cancel them. But uh, everything's still the same. The account is the same. Nothing, nothing new here. So uh, I'm just going to go through the all the instruments and just kind of get my thoughts on what if uh, I had continued or did not make my goal. Was there any other opportunities, positive or negative, uh, for the week? Uh, also, I'm still holding on my micros for the short. Uh, I thought maybe I have a chance to deal with with the news this morning, but uh, it was not meant to be. So it looks like another week until next week. I'm holding the the bulls have uh, are, have been relentless in this in this uh, recent run, and uh, I'm still uh, confused on why we're still moving up. But it is what it is. Starting with the ten year, uh, it was up uh, about five and a half. Uh, it was even higher earlier. The yield is up. And in reverse, obviously, the 10 year notes are down. Uh, again, I'm looking at the 10 year for opportunities. I'm starting to like the 10 year. Uh, started the week in here. There was a short in here that could have taken that. That was done, done really well. This would have not made a fill, but I would have been filled in here. Took about a point with the heat. I moved up with a nice profit. And this would have been a loss in here, and uh, probably would have added to it or waited. Of course, you know, knowing we we would have, you know, this morning we would have the unemployment and the effect on inflation and 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 all the news. I would not be taking it along in here. Uh, I would have probably waited for a long down here. Uh, CL had uh, did give me a good opportunity. But I didn't take it. I was still holding short and uh, from last week, and uh, I just didn't want to keep adding to it. Uh, in here, I, I'm looking at only the the S two and R two, the extreme support. And over here, uh, I had have seen it many times test this extreme level, but uh, never closed below it. So this really held well. It tried it in here. And uh, tried it again. Those are hourly bars, so each one of those is an hour. Tried it in here and tried it in here. They couldn't close below it. Then over here as well. And uh, tried it in here, closed right at it, moved up again. This move in here, it would have been good for a good uh, maybe $220, $230, maybe, maybe even more. Each stick is $1.25, I believe. So uh, it would have, been, would have been a good move. Then even tried it again in here. It gave me it gave me many opportunities to go wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine times, and each each of those times would have done well. Even this most recent one here, from eighty seven to ninety. It's a good three hundred dollar trade. But um, I, I am holding too many shorts on the uh, micro, so I just decided to not take any additional orders and just wait on it. Gold was also looking good. We opened up in here, moved up, didn't make our one back into the midpoint, then started a little bit, then moved up again to the 1809 resistant, the first resistant, which went all the way down to, to midpoint. So a short would have been here with with a with a buyback in here. Would have been good for or at 20 points, gold points, which is by quite a good trade, even on the minis or micros. I mean, yes, this chart looks really busy, there's a lot of stuff going on, but uh, I'm still short basically. I'm, I'm short from, from here somewhere, I believe, and added to it in here. That was from last week. Still holding it. I thought we had a chance today to finally break out. This is the one in the sand, <clears throat> and it held, held really well. I mean, it went down to it, couldn't close below it, 
BIOS, top tier, relentless BIOS again. Moved up to yesterday's uh, point of control, right exactly to the dot, and down again, moved up again to uh, yesterday's value area, low, moved up. So we, we, we're just moving in the range, uh, looking for the next move, either up this way or down. So today is Friday, I really couldn't add anything since I'm already short, like I said. So nothing, nothing with the Aminas. Still holding short. Uh, this I'm holding short this one as well. But if I had taken a short in here, if I was flat going into the week, taking a short in here, it would have done uh, well. And I could take it again over here for another opportunity to exit with, with a profit. Uh, and 2K, uh, now in no man's land, nowhere. We're just in the middle of nowhere. Didn't do anything. I'm short that instrument as well. MYM, no man's land as well. As for the Forex, we, those are the trades, the one that highlighted with the bikes are the trade that I had taken and was out by Tuesday morning. And the rest, anything after Tuesday in here is is additional opportunities that may have arise, arised for, the, for my levels. So nothing, uh, set up on the AUD, AUD CAD. Um, Australian and Swiss, this was, this was one I missed, yeah, and I've talked about that earlier in the earlier video, so no additional opportunities came up after Tuesday, it was in the middle of the range. The Australian dollar, we had wanted to take short in here, missed it, went down, and after I closed everything, if I had been flat, I didn't make my goal, this would have been a great long in here. I moved up all the way to the midpoint and then moved back up. Then could take it long here again, maybe. Uh, that's today. I don't usually initiate no trades on Friday because I want to probably be out of everything by Friday close, especially on Forex. So they will just throw one opportunity in here. Uh, AD New Zealand. This is my trade, then this is a bad bar. Uh, so we only one set up after that is this morning in here, and uh, I'm not sure if I would have taken it being a Friday. But if I had to, I would have been long for a good uh, 36 to 70, good 30, 40, 40 pips. AD Yen. Nothing set up after the initial, after the uh, close all Tuesday. CAD, yen, and we did have quite a few good setups in here. Uh, again, this is closed, down long, long, exited both in here. And after that, it did come down. This would have been a nice long at the S1, moved up. Not a lot of pips because the range has been. Uh, been squeezed a bit so from uh, 103 to 103.78 now I see this pretty good 70, 70 pips that would have been a good trade from here from here to here continued a little bit and came back and this would have been another good trade long in here that would have moved up from 103.4 to 105.7 50 pips could have held it maybe exited in here somewhere with all this uh, this probably point of control in here but uh, or just added to it or just been out and long here again for Friday if if I had wanted if I needed to take a trade which again I did, I did not. Cat Swiss uh, nothing was I didn't do anything with it this week. This would have been a good opportunity in here. It moved up to R1 and again I put my limits just a little bit below the line because of the spread and because sometimes it's just not quite, it doesn't quite go to the to the uh, resistance or the support. So this short in here, I would have taken it in here for sure. And uh, it had a nice move for from 75 to 74, only 75 pips in here. Uh, Swiss yen. Quite a few opportunities in here. Uh, 39 to 70. Yeah, there's a good, good trades in here. All of them would have worked. 
all those lines in here, you could have held them with minimal amount of draw and they all would have uh, given the opportunities to exit with, with the project. And pound AAD, gonna start Tuesday and nothing set up for the rest of the week. Uh, pound CAD and nothing. Um, this was the end. And uh, I guess you could have taken a short in here if you were flat. Came in, you could have taken a short being on R1 and uh, would have given you a good trade in here. Just one time, one opportunity in here. Found the end. No man's land, nowhere in the middle. Found Swiss. Did, uh, I didn't take it earlier this week, but this was a good trade in here. We had one, two, three, four, five hours, five, six hours to enter, even more probably in here, six, seven. So there's plenty of opportunity to, to go short in here and, and, and in here as well. So this would have done, okay, yeah, 1685 down to 60, uh, 20, that's not a lot. But you could have held it and, and waited and if you missed this one, you could have done one, two, three, four, five. You have six opportunities to get in and here. And then finally went down to the midpoint. The cable had uh, given this one opportunity in here for long. This was on Friday. And uh, if I had to take a trade on Friday morning, this would have been a good opportunity. I would have taken three to or two, about 70 pips worth of draw loss, but that uh, would have given you 70 pips as well. Eight. Yeah, so it would have been a nice trade in here. Here are the, uh, I didn't take any trades. I, this is the one I missed. I completely missed it on Tuesday. I was done, so left it alone because I was done for the week. It moved, it moved. Uh, this morning I had a chance maybe I probably been I'll probably miss this trade if I've taken it on a Friday I would have probably missed this short anyway. Euro Swiss nothing. Euro CAD I was short again from the week finished. Then moved up. Could have been short in here again. For a chance from 31 to 85 to 54, about 30 pips or so. Then you have another chance to, if you missed this one, you could have been short in here. And this one was better, 88 down to uh, 40, uh, about 40, 50 pips. Euro New Zealand, uh, nowhere, don't do much of anything. Euro yen, nothing. Yeah, nothing. Euro pound, nothing. New Zealand, yen, nothing. This could have had a few opportunities to go short in here. For a nice game. New Zealand, nothing set up in here. Wasn't deep enough to go long. Euro Swiss, this would have been a good trade out here. Uh, I didn't take it this week, but if I made it here, I would have been short and added over here. And it took this short, it gave, it, it, it had, uh, you know, it had given you from 96.20 to 96.50, 30 pips worth of heat, but I've given you uh, about 100 plus worth of profit gain opportunities. And uh, I would have been, I would have looked at this loan here, I would have been a few ticks above it. I would have been out here for sure, being seeing there was some support in here. And having 80, 90 pips of profit, definitely a good place to 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 exit. And and that was a good place because it came back, we tested that one more time. What it does is it gets people long in here at this level. And what most people will do is put the profit stop in here, right below the support, 
and we'll come back come back in this far, start them out in the without it. Uh, no, nothing set up on the yarn. Uh, I was close, but not uh, close enough to take a trade, and nothing set up after that. CAD, maybe this morning. This is, I'm not really sure if this would have been a trade or not, but I'll more probably would have taken this one. Palantir is still moving. Um, and Apple had uh, given this one opportunity for a short in here. From 166.80 down to 163, 162.80. Um, that's $4. That's $400 if, uh, if I'm buying 100 shares. It's not bad. Uh, and, and that's it. Like I said, I didn't do anything new on the on the uh, Forex. I just wanted to review it and go from there. I did uh, start my, uh, my option spreads on on some of the ETFs and the same same thing only thing is when we test the support I'm buying uh, bullish spreads vertical spreads and then out spreads and when I'm uh, reaching resistant I'm selling I'm buying uh, bearish spreads vertical spreads and uh, if you don't know what spreads are basically you have to go on, on YouTube and uh, read up on what a vertical spread is and it's done with options and I just won't have time to can't explain it's a lot to explain but it's the same thing the only thing is the risk is, is low and it's a limited risk on, on that and you don't have to you'd have to hold for a few days uh, if you have a uh, if you have less than 25,000 in your account you may not be able to say in and out sometimes they move in one day like this one would have been long in here and then one day <laughs> moved up and it would have given you a good 7150 to 7350 almost two dollars worth of profit. I didn't take the X, X I did a few and I took vertical spreads and I took uh, butterflies. And the same thing with butterflies, uh, if not sure what butterflies are, you need to go on YouTube and uh, yeah, read up on what butterflies are. Butterflies basically you you state a price and you think the price is the, the price is gonna be at this level. Let's say we expect this to go back to the midpoint. So I expect this price to be at 77, uh, XLE at 77, within 10 days, 14 days, 30 days, and so on and so forth. And I'm taking uh, the ones I took were well, either 16 days, 15 days, and the verticals are the same way. So I didn't do anything with XLE because it only set up. Actually, it, set up, it did set up here, and I just didn't do anything with it. I understand. I did take a short on XLU and and basically I'm I'm short okay I had to step out for a minute and pause so so again uh, the same thing with the ETFs sell here sell here buy here buy here the only thing is I'm not really adding up to those positions here and here because with spreads it can it's really complicated so I'm just putting down one order on R1 and S1 uh, or if it does do uh, of course I'll do that and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm aiming for return to the mean sort of thing so if we are here I'm thinking we're gonna go back so if I had put a butterfly in here uh, for it to go back into 73 and only had two or three days to expire this would have made about five to one. It would have made a uh, very decent profit. So uh, I didn't do anything in XLU, XLK. I had taken a vertical in here, and it's not where it's at now. It's not moving anywhere. XLV and no man's land, nowhere in the middle. I didn't get anything with uh, XLF. Same thing. Nothing going on. XLI, nothing. XLY, nothing. I did take uh, I did take one for XOP and that was a butterfly and I showed those here in just a little bit. I'm I'm thinking okay we're gonna hold here and we're gonna go back to 13375 or something like that. So I took a I think both a vertical and a butterfly. I'll show those in a little bit. I did take one on uh, as well, uh, vertical on uh, 
x and c. So, so that that's pretty much it for the. Yeah, and that that does the spreads. So the spreads I do them with the tasty works, and I'm gonna go through this. So if, if uh, you have seen spreads traded before, this will make sense. If you've never seen this before, this will not make any sense. Market just closed, so those prices kind of fluctuate crazy. So the on XLC there's a there's a vertical. Vertical is this one and this right over here and the butterfly is is you buy the sun you sell the center and you buy the wings right over here so on all of that all of those positions i'm down about six dollars for the day butterflies usually work toward the expiration last day of expiration if so if if the if the uh, X, uh xlc uh, in 14 days is exactly 56 I'm gonna to make tons of money but usually those things usually don't happen and usually out of them uh, two or three days before they expire and you never make the full amount of money on butterflies uh, with verticals you can expire worthless or what I do is I take 50% if I'm making 50% while I'm investing then, then I'm out of there so for this one example this is a vertical I put a closing over immediately if it's at the mid price for it now is 112, if it gets to 175, I'm making 50% profit, which is I think $100 of what I'm risking. I make $50. I make $150 basically total, so I'll be a $50 profit. XLK, uh, I'm down about six. XLP, I am break even, open top, this is nothing. Uh, XLU, oh, actually, XLP was, was closed by here. This is realized today, fifty-four dollars. So I risked about a hundred, got about uh, fifty uh, fifty dollars in profit. So I got all my money that, that I put for the for the spread plus fifty dollars more. So I'm up fifty dollars on the XLP, uh, which is which is this one. So I went ahead, sold it in here. When it came down here, it, uh, it pretty much fell automatically. I think it fell down here somewhere, but. The idea was in here to here, I would have manually probably got out of it in here with maybe less than 50%, but it just happened that it, it worked out okay. And uh, this is the XOP. XOP, if, if XOP, again, if XOP moves up to here within 14 days, then that, that's what will do extremely well. So far, it's not, it's lot of break even. Yeah, it's not a break even, it costs 40, and it's like at the uh, cost four cents. And then um, I put an alpha for 55 cents, which most probably won't happen, but at least I have something in. And when, when I see enough profit in it, I'll just go and replace auto and change this to, to the market price that's available that day. Once we start getting close to the 132.50, 132.50 out right over here. Yeah, so once we move up to here, if we move up to here, within, within the, the time close to 14 days from now, I'll make money. So I'm probably confused uh, a lot of people with the, with the spreads, but uh, if you do spreads, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So that's that. I'm still holding the shorts and uh, the market is moved up actually, well, moved up some. Didn't really have any opportunities at all this week. It was like right here in the middle with an uptrend. Still, the bulls are still moving up for some reason. I don't know why. And uh, I think you, you know, I gave one opportunity in here, but uh, still holding my short uh, for next week, and uh, we'll see what happens from there. And uh, I will post another video Monday morning showing all my new forex levels for the week in advance and we'll go from there.